one board member. Well then, I guess that's the explanation why I never got an answer. Thank you. Okay, so the next discussion item is the recycling. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So we were in the middle of discussion items, but we had a motion made. Um, so we have a second for that motion as well. Um, just in brief, the motion is to set the expectation for Mr. Peterson to uh, seek out um, valuations of the uh, real estate available to sell uh, by the 16th of January uh, so that that can be evaluated at the next board meeting. So uh, all in favor of, uh, of the motion as stated? Okay. All opposed? Okay, we will set the expectation for Mr. Peterson to uh, deliver that to us by the 16th. The recycling expansion, we've heard about this twice um, in the interest of time. Um, I, I don't know that we have a whole lot to say about this. We've instructed Mr. Peterson to evaluate uh, the needs of the recycle center, including the building and, and all the other um, pieces that you would need to complete the expansion. So as soon as we hear from him, we'll bring that up if it is a dollar amount, which obviously it will be when we're talking about concrete and building and all that. So we will have something to you. But the other items, the, the items that are less expensive, we can get to those um, rather quickly. So I just said he returns on Tuesday. So um, any other items on the expansion of the? No, Ms. Oh, Ms. Elena covered it. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Um, so uh, discussion, discussion item three, uh, private member Facebook group. So um, after, uh, you know, looking at the survey and, and hearing the results of uh, uh, that a majority of the membership gets their information from Facebook, um, I think it, it's proper that we move to a, a situation where we have two, two sets of, of communication. So we have our association page, which is where we would expect and promote um, events and things that are going on that we want the public to come to, where the Chamber of Commerce in Del Rio can be a part of it, uh, the Chamber of Commerce in New Valley can be a part of it. Local businesses can follow it and, and all that, um, where that information is set out. Um, what I'm proposing here in this discussion item is that we discuss setting the expectation of Mr. Peterson to evaluate to have a private uh, members group that is um, administered and, and uh, by the association. Um, in doing a little bit of research about this, there are, are plenty of HOAs throughout Texas that um, have mem private member pages, groups, that uh, you know, members are able to communicate with each other, they're able to communicate with the association. Um, I, I would not expect this to be a situation where um, the, the board would be like directly answering questions for the association, more of a resource of where uh, a community can come together, and if there is a question for the board, then that person can be given the information to properly address the board. So say, for example, um, it, there was a post that was like, why, um, why haven't the stumps been ground yet? Well, the, the response to that from the association would be, okay, um, this is a, 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 a matter that would be addressed by the, uh, the general manager. Um, please send an email and stating your concern to this area. Uh, or to this address. Um, and then if it were a question for the board, then obviously they would be given instructions to send the communication to the secretary or to the FCSA um, uh, email address. So uh, a place where a community can facilitate conversation in a private, uh, private area, I mean, there are situations that we, um, you know, as, as members of a community, and if we want to talk about things that are going on, things that are not going well, we do need to talk about those things. We also don't need prospective people coming to the community to see those things. So that's why I would recommend that this be a private Facebook group, um, you know, for the membership to be able to talk to each other and to communicate with the association. And then there's another piece of this. So you'll see the next discussion item is uh, meeting live stream capability. Um, this is where we would live stream these meetings would be in that private group um, so that if people were uh, not able to attend but did have internet connection they could view it live um, and it's a transition and i don't foresee just because i know this is going to be a question quickly um, would you be able to interact um, with us via the live stream um, 
I have I have watched organizations try to jump to that capacity right away, and it's been a disaster. So uh, it would be my recommendation um, to consider starting with the ability to, to live stream, but then we work towards the ability to interact from the live stream and, and kind of stair step it uh, in order to do that. But we'll get back to the private membership group. So that's kind of the opening and, and if there's any other comments or- The issue with the meeting of live stream, that means to be able to buy the equipment so that we could- like, Right, that, that, right. That's that thing. That's, that's that. the next one, but, that, but it's an important piece yes. of the private membership group would where we would facilitate the the live streaming, so that's why it's necessary to have that as well. I, and I, I have absolutely no problem with getting the equipment so we can live stream to the membership. Uh, the face, uh, Facebook group, uh, who's going to administer that? Uh, I would be my recommendation that we ask Mr. Peterson to evaluate whether he has the personnel to to administer that, or if that would be something that needed to be budgeted in the future. That's my biggest concern, more so because. Um, some of you old timers will re remember there was a time there was a board that was doing this and they were administering it and they decided who and how stuff would be presented. It was a total control of that system and uh, that particular board got themselves into a lot of trouble. Um, that's my biggest concern, the issue of the administration because then they pick and choose who they want to hear from, uh, how they receive that information, it, 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 there's a potential problem just so that we're aware Absolutely. of it. That yeah. we're aware of it. That's all. Yeah, I, it would be it would be my hope that uh, in the in the presentation from uh, Mr. Peterson that we would receive um, a, a a way that people would be um, brought into the group, which I would hope would be in their new member packet going forward. I mean, we'd have to make a conscious effort to get everyone who's already a member, but we are going through that with uh, QuickBooks and Concierge Plus, so. Um, it would be my hope that that would be kind of like a checkbox. Like, I want dispatch, I want, you know, this, I want that, and this would be, that's how that would work. Yes, sir. Isn't this uh, member Facebook group already in existence? It's called Community Council. Yeah. Okay. Thank I, I'm wondering if, if a private Facebook group is the way to go, because there's still a lot of the membership that doesn't do Facebook and have no, social media. This would just be an additional way to communicate, and, and that's why I was kind of shocked like on the survey to see that a majority of the information was gathered via Facebook. Well, I mean, and that, that could be because people prefer it, but, but do we know if it could be, because we don't have a website that people go to consistently, that we don't have a forum that isn't Facebook that that might have been, you know, used. Well, I, I was, so I was just really, saying as, as a no, suggestion. No, that, that's fair. And I was just really shocked because I was kind of in that same thought process as well beforehand until I started to look at other HOAs throughout Texas, and a lot of them have... Um, Facebook. The Facebook, a private Facebook, because I was very much in the same thought process as you. I was like, we don't need that. You know, we've got our association page, and then you know, but just seeing, I guess, the ease at which you know it's accessible and people are already on it. Um, you know, it was clear in the survey that a lot of people consume information from Facebook, and so, and, and then going out to look at other HOAs, I, I was, I was actually really shocked. I was shocked. Um, so, so do we, do we? Uh, this is kind of a discussion, or well, it is a discussion item. Is this something that we want to set the expectation for Mr. Peterson to to come back to us on and, and have a proposal? We don't need a motion or anything. We can just yeah. say we're going to set the expectation. In this order, I would like for Mr. Peterson to to price the equipment. Let us know. Well, we're, that's, a separate, that's, that's a awesome. separate item. Okay, well, that's a separate item. But for that, for that reason. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can yeah. we can get to okay, that. Okay. But as far as Facebook. Yeah, I have no problem with him researching it. I mean, maybe and, and come to us, maybe not necessarily with a proposal unless there's something good out there, but, you know, how, how what are the pros and cons? Right, and how are we going to do it? And how are we going to do how, it? And how, what personnel would be. So I'll outline some of the things that we've talked about and when I send the email to set the expectation for him to do. And I think that it's fair to say that with all the other things going on and, and what's uh, transpiring right now, that it would be the end of the first quarter that we would expect to see a result of this. Definitely, I'd like for him to do it, but do the uh, real estate first. Yeah, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying, set the expectation for the end of the first quarter. And also review Concierge Plus and see what kind of forum 
capabilities that has okay. for private Yeah, because my assumption was that, that they do have that. So, so we, can look at, we can look at that also. Okay. So the next discussion, so I'll set that expectation this week for the end of the first quarter. Um, the uh, meeting of the live stream capability. So this discussion, I don't, you know, we, they, they could have gone in either order. Um, this would be to evaluate the systems that are available to uh, live stream. So there's a, a plug-in between Zoom and, um, and Facebook Live, uh, to, which would be on that private member Facebook group. Um, so this would be to ask him to evaluate a, a system that would allow this boardroom the capability to basically teleconference. Um, my, my initial um, you know, estimation is that you're probably looking at, and this is where I would expect him to come back, which is looking at systems you know, that, that I've used in other, um, in other respects that would be somewhere around $4,000 is what I'm expecting. So. <coughs> That would also add the capability of this room to be rented by other, you know, organizations to do meetings, you know, otherwise. So. But that would be a part of the marketing piece. But um, do we want to set that same expectation for him to evaluate the equipment? Yeah. As long as he doesn't purchase it before we get approved. No, I mean, he, he can't. I mean, this $1,500 is yeah. his spending yeah. limit. So. Okay. All right, agenda item number one, consider approval for termination of contract negotiations with Conference Direct. Um, as I said earlier, I think it was very clear um, that the expectation was that we would do uh, some sort of um, uh, playing via a uh, volunteer organization. So we will we'll work through that with, with those. Um, well, if we, if we approve this, then we will uh, work through that in, through those channels. So. Um, do we have a motion? Can I comment on that? Sure. Yes, sir. Um, I wasn't at the town hall meeting, and I, I didn't know the approach that the board would take prior to uh, this meeting, whether it was going to kind of, this motion was going to try to pass. So I have some things. I don't want to spill any blood or anything like that, but I do want to point out some things that I think would have prevented the overall... Um, so your name, sir? Please. John Wiley. Sorry. Um, oh. My wife, Brittany, we own several lots in the board. Yes. Um, as far as the, the solar clips... You know, the proposed plan for the solar eclipse, I think a lot of us have lived here our whole lives. We've lived here for since we were kids. Um, our families have combined service of 125 years to this community. So the the rumor mill, you can see how it gets ginned up really quick. Well, that's nothing new. You know, that's a pretty common practice in a small town anywhere you go. Um, but when things, I think, are done out of order, which I think you've maybe learned some lessons from this, uh, at least I, I think I've seen that. Um, when things are done out of order, I think people smell that. You know, they, they kind of sense that. And it gins up the community. And when the community gets ginned up, uh, you have horrible things happen. Like uh, the gentleman that doesn't want to run anymore for the architectural committee, or I, I don't know if I have that right. Uh, Annabelle, uh, what's, what's happened to her. And I think ultimately that's a result. And we're all allotted and allowed mistakes. So I, I don't, I'm not trying to sink the ship here, okay? But... I think that's because of the manner in which this was brought to the fore. And in the executive uh, officer's role, which the executive officer is the general manager, okay, the general manager's role is to bring contracts to the fore. And it is not okay for any board member to spearhead anything at all. You have no right to bring a contract to this body, to this membership. Okay? You just don't. It's not in the documents for that to be possible. The general manager has to bring those documents to the board. That's the order of things. Because that was done backwards, I think people got really upset, and of course the amount of money. So there's a few more things that I was really proud of the people uh, for bringing to the attention. First of all, this is a speculative, it, it was going to be, I'm assuming, a speculative endeavor. And any speculative endeavor is, is not the right of any board, okay? That's just not your right. In the declarations, it states the only, pretty much the only thing that you would ever have to spend a breach of, we'll say, an absorbent amount of money, whatever that is to somebody <coughs> different, twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, whatever it is, would be for a capital improvement project. If you wanted to bring George Stray here, you don't have that right. I'm sorry, you don't. It doesn't matter if even the general manager brings that to you as a, pr a proposed contract to say, we can make a million dollars by bringing George Stray here. You still don't have that right. So 
one of the things that I really took away from the town hall was that the members had really great instincts. They were like, hey, why don't we have a bid process for this? Well, why don't we have a membership vote? Why, why don't we have private memberships that are being honored here? And I think something to remember is that you use a really interesting term that I hadn't really thought about, Travis, and this goes to y'all's hard work, okay? That you've pulled the Ford out of triage state. And thank you. Great. It's awesome. Okay? That's a lot of hard work. Everybody's passionate. We can all see that. Okay? So thank you. Um, but the Ford's day-to-day -day obligation is ordinary business. The declaration which was set forth in 1971 sets the roadmap for how this board is supposed to operate and how the fort is supposed to operate. Those commercial entities that are here on the fort are your only obligation. Nothing outside of that can enter. There is gray area. We didn't have hunting 20 years ago. We do now. Nobody's raising a huge stink about that, okay? It does bring revenue. However, it's not in the charter. So I think there's some... There's some uh, there's some wiggle room there. But I want to read one of the code of ethics that I think is important because I've kind of heard everybody echo some of this. And that's recognize the duties director is not to ensure that the association is well, is, is not to ensure that the association is well managed, but not to manage the association, is that to ensure the association is well managed, but not to manage the association. Okay? It's the general manager's duty to, to manage the association from day to day. And you referenced that, Travis. I'm, I'm proud of you for doing that. I really am, okay? Because I kind of understand a little bit more about maybe what was going on. But y'all were a little more involved, and now you're trying to back away and allow the manager to do his job. But it is his job to manage the nuts and the bolts and to bring the triage state to you and say, hey, I need help, okay? So that's the way this should have gone. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some, there's some other major issues that I want to bring up. And, and we, the, the board is already out of compliance with Texas law as it sits right now. So on your website, you have property code 209, and 209 is three pages long, and it was enacted in January 1st, 2002. That's what's on your webpage, okay? The new updated version is September 1st, 2021. It's 55 pages long, and I will read you the exact law. This is uh, section 209.0052, section C. In addition to the other applicable requirements of this section, association that proposes a contract for services that will cost more than $50,000 shall solicit bids or proposals using a bid process established by the association. That's a big one. If y'all would have voted for this to go through, the liability would have been enormous because you have no right. You would have not sent it through a bid process, and we're already out of compliance because the board has to put in this established bid process, which obviously every government sector and private municipality, it doesn't really matter, within the state of Texas, you should fit the three-bid process, whether that's a low-bid process or a low-bid qualified process, okay? And then, you know, obviously if you want to select high-bid, that's political suicide, whatever, right? So there's some things that were really, really skipped here that if – had we gone through with this, would have led to major legal problems, like serious legal problems, okay? So in the future, let's review 209 and get some of that stuff figured out because that's something that I, now that you're armed with that information, maybe somebody may, needs to make a motion to put that into the next meeting that we adopt the rules for a bid process for anything over $50,000, or it's something that maybe amongst you, you can go beyond that because this isn't, there's a lot of HOAs that $50,000 isn't a lot of money, but that is here. So maybe that's something that that you can lower that number. I don't know. that You can decide that, but the minimum law requirement is $50,000. But I want to be really, really clear. And the, peop, the reason that people are so upset, and the reason that we're here today, my wife and I are here today, we couldn't be at the town hall, is that this is a lot of money. And the only reason the money, the money, this kind of money can be spent is for a capital improvement project. So I, I want to finish that. It, uh, or there is one more pathway, and that's a total vote of the membership. We could do the contract, but it would have to go to a total vote of the membership. Now, if this body decides that they want to do that, my wife and I are willing to donate that money in order for this to go to a vote to the membership. Okay? We'll, we'll reimburse the port for any of that money in suit. Okay? Um, so I, I think that we as a community, and I know we've talked about this in several steps, but I think that we need to kind of hit the reset button here a little bit. Everybody's a little hot up here. I know people are hurting out here. And ultimately, I think what might have ignited that fire is this whole deal. And I say that, Travis, through years of living here and years of understanding the dynamics 
and the dichotomy of what goes on on the court, what goes on in Brackettville, it's not easy. And God bless you, Annabelle. I'm sorry you had to go through this, but it just kind of comes with the territory, you know. Um, but uh, it doesn't make it okay. It, 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 yeah, it doesn't make it okay. It, it doesn't. It doesn't make it okay. Um, but something that I've that there is an ability to heal. The first time I talked to um, Peterson. Brittany and I were talking about buying some properties up here, and if we'd have been standing in front of each other, we probably would have been fighting. So now I have nothing but Mr. Peterson's respect. I think he has the best interest of the port at heart, um, and I think he's working his butt off every time I call him. He's breathing hard because he's doing something working his butt off, okay? The guy has given his blood and guts for this community to try to help it and help it succeed. So the, the reason I bring that up is that we can have some hard times and get past them and still see eye to eye, but we need to, as a community, and this goes to the members as well, number one, this isn't a lot of documents to read. This didn't have to get this far. We could have read these documents and stopped it at the very first meeting and, and brought this to the, the, the board's attention. Now, should it have happened? No. But we, as the members, need to stay diligent in knowing what our rights are and what aren't because the board can't be expected to get in triage and do everything perfectly, okay? Um, but we, my wife and I, we would love to help in any way that we can. Um, I've offered our services to bring a million dollars worth of equipment in here for a week out of the year to, to Mr. Peterson multiple times to do riparian habitat cleanup, to clean up whatever, golf course, the pool, whatever. We specialize in uh, uh, commercial um, land clearing and, and just anything, side work, stuff like that. And then Brittany has extreme marketing expertise and, of course, we do a lot of real estate. She runs multiple businesses. So any way that we can help, I just I felt like it was necessary to kind of say some of that. I don't want to come across as attacking anybody on either side. But we got to kind of put the, you know, cut, quit, rattle, and sabers here and just calm it down a little bit. But, but Travis, to you, I, you this, I don't know that it would have gotten to this point had we had the whole spearheading thing happened, okay? It sounds like you learned some of that. I hope that you have. I'm really, from what you've already said, I'm proud of you and the fact that it sounds like yeah. Okay. So uh, kudos to you. But I just wanted to kind of let everybody know where where we stood and then, I, you know, hopefully we can start the, you know, healing process a little bit here. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. He got them all. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you have a motion? Yeah, I make a motion that we. What does that say? Termination. <laughs> Termination. Uh, terminate the contract negotiations with uh, Conference Direct. I second that motion. All in favor? All right. Consider approval for MK builders to repair the thresholds and corner posts of Cotton Hall. And all is a motel, correct? Correct. Now, is it, that's the whole, both buildings? Is that how that's? Uh, so, the, that's probably not, so the corner post of Patton Hall, and okay. then the and thresholds the, of the entire, of both, yeah, of both. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so like, you know, things won't be able to crawl underneath the door, is that what you're Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Just, just, um, out of clar for clarification purposes, MK Builders has been remodeling that hotel now for almost two years. Uh, when I saw that bid, I, I just all of a sudden thought about this. Um, they've been remodeling for two years. They've got five rooms that are pending that are not done yet. And now there's, are they going back to fix work that they had already done on those rooms? Now the issue with the thresholds, because those rooms should have already been fixed. I, I'm not sure what... There's what, how many thresholds do they need to fix? So the thresholds were originally removed from the bid three boards back. So those rooms were never remodeled? No, the no, threshold. I know what the threshold is, yes, yeah. but, but isn't that part of the remodeling process? No, it was removed from the bid three boards back. When it was bid originally, they said, we don't need to mess with the thresholds. They're good as is. They're not. And remember... When they were looking at it, there was at least three layers of, of, it was probably okay. The doors were probably okay because there was three layers of material there. 
And so then once you get down and you remove all, and you know, this much glue. Um, but, so, but didn't they have a contract for the doors? It was what? removed from the bid in the original contract three boards back when it was first considered that the threshold piece was taken out in order to save expense. This okay. is the explanation that was given to me when I asked about it. Okay, I know that we ordered doors. This is a couple years ago. We ordered doors. I'm assuming MK put them in. And I don't know who would, and I don't, I know who you're talking about who ordered, who contracted MK builders. I understand that part. But all the doors were replaced first, and then the rooms started to be remodeled, and we still had five more rooms to go, supposedly. So then my question is, when those doors were put in the first time, they didn't fix your thresholds. It was removed from the contract, and I can ask you to put a door in and not complete the job. I mean, that's... that's... Well, the point is that they had a hard time putting those doors in because of the fitting issue on some doors. They weren't pretty hung, though. Okay. They were pre hung doors with a threshold down. Threshold. Okay. So they put in new doors, but they didn't do the thresholds. Right over the threshold. As per the contract. As per the contract. Now we're doing double work. <laughs> okay. So we have a, a proposal here um, to repair the door thresholds per the attached list, pour concrete, repair the thresholds as needed, install door sweeps on all thresholds. Threshold repair is for both Patton and Bullis buildings. Patton Hall, oh, so, okay, this is one complete bit. Patton Hall, jack roof and deck to repair corner post. Install new six by six post to secure uh, deck to new post. Repair trim as required around post. Four Clark Springs to provide door sweeps for an installation. All other materials provided by contractor. Um, so just, you may not know what the other issue is that we're talking about, but at the corner, right, uh, at at the corner of Fort Clark Road, um, there at the stop sign. That, if you look to the right, that front post has deteriorated over time due to water damage. And so it's, it's braced right now, um, but it needs to be jacked up, removed, and repaired. And I have no problem with that. Okay. So th this is one en encompassing bid for $4,400. Make sure they put it on a cup so it doesn't happen again. <laughs> Seriously. No, 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 I'm, I'm with you. I've got the same problem over here, so. Can you put an end date on that project? <laughs> Unfortunately, no, and I can't. <laughs> do we have any other questions, or do we have a motion, actually? Well, can I mean, as far as like he said, is that something we need to just let... It's Adam actually, co it's code now, right? That's code. There's no code here now. Oh, so, like, there's, there's no code. In this. <laughs> but if, if, it's, if it's not on that it's, right. six for sixes? Yes. If it's not on a six for six step and keeping an inch and a half off the inch, inch and a half, inch and a quarter off the ground, it'll just wick out. No, no, again. agreed, agreed. Uh, just to make sure. That I, I thought have, that was. It's like 10 bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but that's not state law no? Beats me. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We've been at it, right? I mean, I'm I'm a rebel. Rebel. I don't know. Oh, no, I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's going to be there. I mean, I... Okay. Uh, unless, it's not, unless it's not there. date. Yes. <laughs> the problem with that right now, setting or <clears throat> mandating completion date, the contractor is going to depend on supply chain issues Honestly. or whether... Um, so it's very difficult to demand a completion date. You can negotiate a tentative date for completion, but we are, uh, we, the contractor, will be subject to supply. And, and revenue. And, yes. I mean, if we're making revenue and people want to stay in them with, you know, That's right. gaps, then by all means, get after it. So, uh, there are things, what I'm trying to say is there are there are, there are things out of our control out of our and control. out of the contractor's control. Uh, I, I think that it would be uh, appropriate for us in the motion to request a, a weekly update from the general manager on where we are with this project. And if we are not completing uh, the project because we had hunters in or we, we didn't do any thresholds this week because we had... DPS here, whatever the case may be, then we know that 
um, and ask him to add that to his uh, GM report. For the, I, I feel like that's an appropriate um, piece to add to the motion. I agree. So do we have a, a, a motion? I make a motion that we accept the bid for $4,400 to repair, do the repairs that are listed in the, in the proposal and include a weekly update from Mr. Peterson on the project. Okay. Have a second? A second. Okay. All in favor? Okay, so Sunday, December 18th, FCS uh, Family Christmas, that will be at the Service Club, um, 2 to 4 p.m. December 20th through the 26th, uh, Elizabeth Hodges will be playing vintage organ music at her residence here on Fort Clark Road. Uh, December 20th through the 26th, the Leopin Apache uh, will have their uh, lit teepees out in Rendezvous Park. December 23rd, Lights at Los Morris at 6.30 p.m., uh, Rendezvous and Swim Park. So please join us for that. we have any other event announcements from directors? Nope. Nope. Membership? Any other announcements? Okay, at this time, um, as soon as I'm done, we'll have a motion to um, adjourn into executive session. Anything that we need to vote on after executive session, we will reconvene regular session, uh, which will be on the video. Uh, that you'll see on YouTube, or you can stick around. I don't think we have a heavy uh, uh, executive session um, this this meeting, but it uh, could be an hour or so. Um, I do want to thank everyone for coming out um, and participating. Um, I do think that as as you know, we had members speak up to say like that we're we're in a process and that they understand that. That's very helpful uh, to know that, that that you do see a difference and a change, um, and it will only get better as you know, we all continue to participate. So I do thank everyone for coming out and, and listening and speaking. Um, and it's much appreciated. One thing. I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And please feel free to call upon me. I can only speak for myself if you all need any assistance or help or information. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Do so I have a motion to adjourn to the executive session? Make a motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor. All right. What time is it? It is eleven thirty-two. My trouble.